In this video, we're going to look at how to use uh, random numbers in a spreadsheet in order to sort a list. Um, one very good reason for doing this is to eliminate any kind of bias. Um, and as teachers, we need to always keep in mind that, that no matter what we're doing, we, we bring our own biases to, what, to any task that we're doing, um, even if it's subconscious. Um, and we want to make sure we eliminate that, especially when it comes to um, comes to dealing with our students. Um, we want to make sure that we're always fair and that our own biases aren't getting in the way. Um, this would be a good way in the classroom to uh, create a list of students, um, maybe the order that they're going to present their, their projects in, or you could use this as a virtual version of the old popsicle sticks in a cup um, where you write the kid's name on a popsicle stick and then you just pull them out at random. Um, so this uses technology to do kind of the same thing. Um, the example I'm going to use today is actually going to be with a list of teachers. So the situation is we got in an order of new teacher Chromebooks. Um, they back ordered a lot of them, so we only got 12 in. And I've got much, I've got a, a, more teachers who want them than I have Chromebooks available. So. What I did was I set up a form, had the teachers respond to it to, to, sh to let me know that they needed a Chromebook. And so I've got 18 teachers responded and I've got 12 Chromebooks to distribute. And so to make sure that I don't play favorites, um, I'm going to use uh, random numbers in the spreadsheet in order to choose who gets the Chromebooks and who has to wait for the ones that are on back order. So uh, here on the first tab of my form, uh, of my uh, spreadsheet, are the form responses. Now I could just work in this this page of the spreadsheet, uh, but one thing I've found with forms um, is that when someone submits the form, it doesn't just take their answers and then paste it into the next available cell. What it does is it actually inserts a new row into the, into the spreadsheet. Um, and if you have formulas in here, um, that can really mess up your um, your cell references and your in your formulas. So I've learned this the hard way that, that this is not going to work. So um, what I need to do is take the data that I need to work with and put it into a different sheet. It can be in the same spreadsheet, um, but it just can't be where the form responses are delivered. So I'm going to highlight the names of the teachers, and I'm going to do Control C to copy and you get the familiar dotted blue lines to show that it has uh, copied the data. And I'm going to add a sheet here. And now I'm going to paste them in. And I'm going to label my columns. You should always label your columns. Uh, especially when you're going to be doing sorting, it just makes things a lot easier. My third column I'm just going to call random. And because I'm a little anal retentive with my spreadsheets, I, I always do some different formatting for the column headers just so I remember those are the headers there. Now I could just put in numbers randomly, you know, close my eyes and start tapping on the keyboard, um, but I want to use the, the spreadsheet to actually do the work for me. So I'm going to put in a formula that generates random numbers, and it's a very simple formula. So like all formulas, it starts with equal, um, and then I'm going to start typing the word random. And when I get to RAND, when I get to the D, I see there are two different randomization formulas. The first one is just called RAND, and it tells you it generates a random number between 0 and 1. Um, and what it's going to give me is actually a 10-digit decimal, decimal number uh, between 0 and 1. The other one, RAND between, lets me set the, the upper and lower ends of the, of the range. So I can say... Since I've got 18 teachers, I want a random number between 1 and 18. And that would give me nice whole numbers to work with. Um, the problem with that is, um, like with a penny flip, um, you know, math teacher or statistics teacher will tell you that, you know, when you flip a penny, um, doesn't matter how many times you flipped it before, the way it lands is going to be random. And just because it was heads the previous flip, that does not mean that tails is more likely on the next flip. Um, and the same thing is going to happen with random numbers. If I have, uh, if I set the range between 1 and 18, um, the chances that I'm going to get duplicates in that list is very, very high. Um, 
with RAND, uh, the chances that a 10-digit decimal is going to come up exactly the same is is vanishingly small, as they say in mathematics. So um, I'm going to go with just RAND because it doesn't need to be a whole number because I'm not really doing anything with it other than sorting the list. And uh, because I'm using a spreadsheet, 10, it doesn't matter if it's a, a whole number or 10-digit 10, 10 decimal or if it's a 17-digit number, uh, the spreadsheet's going to sort it just as well either way. Like all formulas, you have to have parentheses. Uh, but with the rand command, there are no arguments. So I just have to do some blank parentheses like that. And you'll see that it's already generating a number for me. So it's telling me it's going to put in 0.9542, blah, dot, 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 dot. Um, that's actually not the number that's going to show up in here. And you watch when I hit enter, the number that comes up is actually 0 0.2085, uh, 2, 0 0.2083, dot, dot, dot. Um, this is a volatile formula. It changes all the time. Every time I work on that formula or work on the sheet, it's going to re-randomize the numbers. And this can be a little disconcerting when you're sorting your lists. Um, but if I close this list and open it back up again, this number will change. It won't be 0 0.208. Um, it'll be something completely different. So um, this is the result of the formula. You can see the actual formula up here in the formula bar. Now I'm going to use the autofill function to take that formula and paste it into every cell on my list. And you'll see that the, none of the numbers are the same. Um, these two get close. It's got the first two numbers the same, but then they diverge there. So I don't have to worry about getting duplicate numbers with a with a 10-digit decimal. And you'll see that the number up here was 0.2 when we started. Now it's 0.6. So every time I do something, it, it is going to change. So um, just keep that in mind. Now that I've got my random numbers, I want to reorder the list according to these random numbers. So what I need to do is highlight the data that I want to sort and I make sure that I highlight all three columns and you can do the whole column or you can just do this the ones that have uh, data in them. I'm going to go up to data, sort range. Um, I always label my rows or um, so I need to make sure I put the check mark in there and I want to sort by the random row. I don't care if it's from uh, the low value to high or high value to low because they're random. Um, and I'm going to click sort. And let's just keep them. Just remember that uh, Miss Valenzuela's number was 0 0.610. So I'm going to sort it. And if we find Miss Valenzuela here, the number has changed again. But it did sort the row according to those previous numbers. But every number changed. So if I sort this number again, I'm going to get, or sort this range, this range of data again, I'm going to get a completely different order. Um, so that way you can, you can actually use this over and over again. So if I want to re-randomize in the middle of class for a different task, or I want to randomize at the beginning of each period, um, all I have to do is sort this range. And I don't have to worry about re-entering the formula or changing the numbers because they're volatile. They're changing all the time. And so now I have my list uh, randomized. Um, and so I know that, you know, these first 12 teachers here are going to get the first 12 Chromebooks and the others, unfortunately, are going to have to wait until the back order comes in. And that's basically it. So if you have any questions, you can contact me at tdoyle at muhsd.org. Thank you for watching.